Okay, it's the one o'clock block. Welcome to Sustainable Hawaii. Uh, we have three people who join us today for this discussion. Uh, one is Gordon Fuller, my old friend who is in the studio. Aloha. Say hi, Gordon. Aloha, Kako. Oh, wow. And two people remote. All right, and this is all about a company about uh, e e Eco Homes. Did I get that right, Gordon? Eco Home. Yeah, can you, can you talk about that? This is a huge, big project, very important for climate change here and elsewhere. Well, I'm going to probably let the founder, uh, Mr. Mike Reynolds, give us a little bit of background on EcoHome. But I'll just say uh, what we're doing here today is introducing EcoHome to Hawaii. Uh, we believe that good housing solutions should be affordable and they should be sustainable. And when we say sustainable, we mean like the people who founded our beloved islands here who lived in balance with nature. And these two gentlemen are indeed going to help us do even better than we have in the past. As we were driving in today, we saw all the big tall buildings coming up, and that's really great, it means we'll have a lot of new people coming to Hawaii. But we have a lot of housing needs for the people who live here already. The Hawaiian community has 2.4 families per home, and we think that they should have a better opportunity, and we think we have the answer. We understand that housing is a critical need here, and we believe that it could be a good thing. Uh, joining us also is Bob Pearson, and Bob, is indeed the uh, business development director with EcoHome. And the two of them are gonna share with us a little bit about what EcoHome does. And uh, Mike, why don't we start with you? Could you give us a little background on EcoHome? Yeah, um, my, myself, I'm a builder. The, all of the, the founders of EcoHome, we're all builders. We uh, effectively uh, started the website because there was a real shortage of information available um, and to of sustainable housing. In fact, when I was building my own house, I couldn't find the right information. And collectively, we're a group of builders and engineers, environmentalists, and we wanted to create a place where people could find that imp the important information they needed to build properly, to build more sustainable houses, more environmentally responsible houses that last longer, that are healthier for occupants. Um, and that's that's eco home. There you go. We, we took it as far as we could, and then now we have Robert. As I understand it, gentlemen, uh, Eco Home has over, did I understand, 6,000 articles on the web to help people find out how to modify and how to build uh, eco housing? We've got a French website as well. Uh, so while as I live in Quebec, I've, I run the, the English Eco Home. We have a French website as well. Uh, and collectively, yes, we have at least that. Uh, in it would be on that, yeah. And Robert, you were sharing with me, there are many videos up on YouTube and uh, a lot of articles that have been published by EcoHome to help people looking ahead. And, and as I understand it, what we're doing now is bringing this to Hawaii as a consultancy to help uh, stimulate and to assist people in developing a wonderful sustainable housing here. Is that correct? Uh, I'm sorry, could, I didn't actually hear the Oh, you Robert, we're, we, were, we were just talking. That. We were just talking about the publishing that Eco Home has been doing over the years. I understand there are a substantial number of articles advising people yeah. on how to modify and build sustainable, uh, ecologically balanced housing, and some YouTube videos as well. And now, as I understand, yeah. you're branching out into uh, really providing a global expertise on demand consultancy. If I understand correctly. That's correct. The The difference that we've tried to make with other websites that give advice that uh, will uh, promote certain uh, products that are labeled green, uh, the difference is that we actually um, are builders. We, we build homes. EcoHome has built, for example, the first lead platinum V4 home in Canada was built by EcoHome. Uh, as a, uh, a test platform, if you like, for um, certain uh, ideas, certain materials, certain ways of doing things, so that we have real-world experience, not only theoretical uh, ideas, because unfortunately, uh, in Canada and in the US, certain parts of the building codes haven't kept up with the uh, technology that's available or the way that houses need to be built for the future, uh, which is more efficient housing, uh, better insulated housing, um, 
and and you know it still sounds outlandish when you suggest to somebody uh, living in uh, Ottawa or the the northern reaches of Ontario, uh, for example, or uh, Wisconsin or Montana. Uh, it sounds outlandish when you say, well, instead of putting twenty, thirty thousand dollars into your heating system, um, why not make a passive house? Uh, why not build a passive house with better insulation? and better air sealing that doesn't need a heating system. And, and that still sounds outlandish, which is unfortunate when you consider that the first um, recognized passive house was built 40-something uh, years ago in Saskatchewan, I believe, Mike. Saskatchewan. You take over, Mike. Well, Mike, may I ask you, uh, Mike, uh, what are these certifications that Robert's referring to? What do they mean? And uh, I'll just add that we're very interested in alternative types of building and building materials. We import 100% of building materials here in Hawaii. Yeah, so the passive house Robert was mentioning was an experimental house built in Saskatchewan. Uh, and it really, it, it was commissioned by the Canadian government. They handed it to a bunch of engineers, um, Harold Orr, one of which recently won the Order of Canada. And they, what they've done is they, they've pushed energy efficiency to a new level. That in itself gave birth to the passive house movement uh, starting in Germany, which is effectively, you're focusing on the building envelope. You're retaining the heat you have rather than focusing on, as Robert was saying, like dropping 30 grand into a heating system or a cooling system is insulated, make it airtight. Um, and so that this movement has swept the globe. Our contribution to this is like the house that Robert just mentioned uh, is our Edelweiss house that won the lead uh, LEED V4 Platinum. So LEED is an environmental rating system as well. Um, and what it does is it promotes energy efficient housing, sustainable housing, healthy housing. And so when we decided to build that house, and it's a demonstration house, the goal of it was, first of all, to show people that it's not that expensive um, and it's worth it. You end up, you invest a bit more at the start, you save money over the life of the house. On top of that, it's healthier, it's more comfortable, you have a quality of life, uh, it lasts longer, and eventually it saves you money. You invest now, you're not you're you're paying for insulation rather than paying for heat or or cooling. So that's that, that's the premise of it. And it's through the building of that house that we did, I think there's some 20, almost 25 videos documenting step by step how to do this. And again, the whole premise was make this information accessible to home builders and uh, homeowners. So this is a new kind of technology or a series of technologies over all these thousands of articles. That can I can I look at these articles today? Can I go to the web yeah. and actually read these articles? If I want to adopt these these um, suggestions, articles, new technologies, um, can I just build my own house? Or do I? Are you guys dealing with contractors, or are you? assuming that the the homeowner will build his own house how does that work it starts with oftentimes homeowners doing the research because they want a better house so we do have a lot of general contractors who go find the latest materials latest technologies but oftentimes it's homeowners trying to find the best information and then they can educate their own general contractor they get to make those decisions so it's a mix of everyone and the information is written in a way for what we aim is that, yes, you can understand it. It's, it's to take building science and bring it down to the base levels to make you understand that you don't need to be an engineer or physicist to understand how a basic the basic functions of a house, of how it it's, works. It's, so, uh, yeah, it's about, removing, it's about removing the obstacles and barriers for people to be able to achieve uh, a better standard of home without uh, immediately exploding a budget um you know i i am very careful shall we say with uh with finances and uh it seems you spend so much time in manchester is, that's what happens to you exactly <laughs> and uh and the um the thing is the perception is that as soon as you start talking about sustainable housing you talk about higher performance housing uh, the perception is that it's going to cost more. 
Um, and it needn't necessarily cost more. It can be um, a different use of technique, a different way of sealing a window in, a different choice of material. Um, you know, instead of, uh, instead of choosing this kind of drywall, choose this kind of drywall. Um, where to place the um, vapor barrier in the structure, for example, within a certain climate. So it's, it's techniques and it's methods and it's uh, proven building science um, that enables people to build a, a better home and have a home that's um, more comfortable, um, that keeps a more consistent temperature throughout a wide variety of climatic circumstances. Um, and, and, you know, everybody benefits. Where is the downside? And Jay, so, uh, so that's, that's well, I'll give you some possible downsides, coming. Gordon, let me suggest. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, number one is, um, um, you know, we in Hawaii, we have unions and the unions want to be in, involved in as much construction as they can possibly be involved in. They may want to get into that dynamic and um, have some kind of influence on it. Um, the other is uh, people don't know. They don't know there's global technology that is emerging that is useful in every state of this union and in Europe and in Canada and for everywhere for that matter, yeah. uh, they may not know and uh, they have to be aware of the articles and the new technology and uh, they have to be able to get the, the building materials that would satisfy the, the new specs and standards in all these articles. So, yes. so th I would see those as potential uh, barriers to, you know, to doing what you're talking about. Anybody want to answer me mm -hmm. on that? I'll just jump in to say it. That's um, how that's how we hooked up with these gentlemen, actually, uh, with their broad experience in Europe, Canada, the United States. Uh, they bring to us a lot of knowledge. And here's the interesting thing: despite the fact of the, that they are a web-based organization uh, of global experts, they are not supported by advertising. That's not how they roll. Uh, they're not there to try to push their solutions. They're there to, to try to help find the best of breed solutions regionally. So here in Hawaii, it's one of the biggest concerns. We have 100% of all building uh, materials come from off island, from the mainland or from around the world. And we'd really like to see that change because the original inhabitants here had a million people living in balance and uh, they didn't have any container ships at all. Mm -hmm. What's the business model you know, to this approach? You, you mentioned a website. Um, is that a website I have to pay to get on? Uh, do I have to, do, how do you guys make any money doing this? No, the, uh, I, I'll step in and explain here. Is um, What God just said about uh, the advertising side of things isn't quite correct. There is advertising on the website, but we don't accept adverts from just anybody. Uh, we don't take adverts from companies that, um, that don't manufacture to a certain specification and to a certain uh, eco specification um, for the products that they're offering, because this is part of what is confusing um, for the consumer, is that trying to establish what is actually a green building product is very difficult because every single company out there has realized that the green building industry is uh, a growth market it is an interesting market for all mainstream manufacturers to jump on. And so dare one say that they are using their marketing machines to greenwash um, certain products that should not have uh, the connotation of green associated with them. Um, the, these products should not be uh, allowed to be promoted in that way. Um, you know, it's, it's almost like having gluten-free drywall um you know uh, for the food in, for the food industry it's it's much the same thing so we're very uh selective with who we allow to become uh partners to certain sections and we don't allow them to influence the opinions that we have we give a balanced opinion we weigh up uh different solutions to the same problems we weigh up different products uh that solve solution uh, that solve problems that are uh, you know, that always happen within a building envelope. There are always uh, conflicting opinions. And so this is why it's so important to put this information out there. So people have um, real world information so that they can form their own opinion. 
So uh, you have an make, ongoing make, you have an ongoing research project, really, to find out the absolutely, latest technologies, absolutely. best and so, practices. And so if yeah, if I can if I can give you the example for Hawaii, uh, is Hawaii has a particular set of challenges. Is particularly interesting to us because very much because you are islands, because you are a um, you are a representation, if you like, of the planet itself, which is um, if you are producing waste, if you are um, using energy, uh, you know, without any regard to how it's being produced, um, then, you know, you are in a net negative uh, situation for the, for the islands themselves. So Eco Home in looking at Hawaii, one of the first things that we sat down and discussed was, okay, how do we tailor this to the particular um, requirements for properties on Hawaii? Um, what are the local materials that are available? Of course, with the um, uh, legislation in connection with hemp production that's been, you know, it's been blocked by legislation up to now, but I believe that those barriers are being removed. Hemp is, hemp is a very useful material um, for being used in building materials for insulation purposes, for the fact that it doesn't harbor mold, um, for the uh, self-regulation, for humidity, um, for uh, temperature control. So, so uh, hemp products, for example, are something that we're um, definitely looking to uh, push within the framework of EcoHome uh, Hawaii um, because they are also a local material. So, so uh, EcoHome in um, Quebec, for example, decided to take things to the next level. So they have partnered with architects and manufacturers of prefabricated um, uh, prefabricated kit homes that do the main structure of the home to a very high standard. Um, so these are, you know, this is a model for what we are now looking to do with Hawaii is to find partners using um, local resources using local materials and produce affordable, high efficiency housing for Hawaii. Okay, but so my, question, is, is, my, my question, my uh, question, Mike, is um, how do you make money? Well, do we as make Robert money? mentioned, we do have partners that come on. Um, that say that we do have sponsors on the website. We select and we, we uh, people need to buy products. So if they're going to buy something, we partner with the ones that we like. As I was mentioning, it doesn't affect the editorial content. We don't allow certain products on. Um, that's 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 our mission. Uh, and through that, however, we we can discuss the pros and cons of any particular product. Uh, so basically, is the information in there is pure. We have engineers, uh, we're builders and engineers, and we do our research and we make sure that we we try to expose find the better products, uh, expose the greenwashing when we find it. Uh, and basically give the people the information to make the right decisions. And yes, if you find an advertiser on our website, it means we vetted them, we like them, we're okay with that. And so yes, they're they're what helped keep us going. So you you know, you're yeah. actually you're benefiting from um, the transaction where I go on your website, I find a supplier, I buy what directly from the supplier, but you're you're in a partnership with the supplier, and you get a part of that transaction. Is that how it works? Oh, it's it's exposure. Uh, like you're you're reading a magazine, a newspaper. You see an article. You see a billboard on the side of the road. They'll pay for, they'll pay for it to see. So companies will pay to be seen. So when we we have a readership that are looking for high performance, sustainable products, they end up on our website. So the, those pro those those manufacturers want to be seen. So we we have our we have our pick of the litter. We can we pick and choose. We don't which is it. We don't let anybody on there. Uh, it's, it's yeah, well they, vetted. They, 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 we're in a we're in a situation in the world now where uh, people's buying choices, the the whole model for path to market uh, is changing dramatically for so many products that um, you know people uh, people even if they go to their local builders merchant, um, people these days you know they don't just go to the builders merchant and take what they're being told as, as necessarily being correct. 
they have a tendency to go and see what's available and then they will very often go online seek information um to work out uh, you know what the choices are they're going to make so um we as i say we provide the vehicle for getting the information out there and to give the eco credentials the specific eco credentials of the products um so that people can make a choice what's the name of the website ecohome.com or something like that .net. Dot net. One so word. And, and Gordon, how, how, why, what are you doing in this deal? Well, um, I, I was looking for a resource as we looked at some properties we had. We wanted to develop one over in Maui on a beautiful beach. Mm -hmm. um, we were thinking, how, how can we make it most efficient? How can we make it so that it's affordable? Because affordable is not six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, not anymore. <laughs> no, we need we need housing that fits the lifestyle of today. And a lot of the millennial folks who are very interested, the the the, the children of our Hawaii, uh, they are not interested in their parents sprawling two thousand square foot homes. They're kind of interested <laughs> a little more efficient, a little more minimal, a little more in balance, and uh, w without the maintenance and so on. So because of those criteria and recognizing that as we get older also, we want to downsize perhaps, or, or we just can't afford the lossy houses we've had with their flat roofs and big air conditioners and housing that would be frankly devastated if we had a serious tropical storm like we've seen in Puerto Rico. So what's the future for Hawaii? How are we going to live in balance? How are we going to make more opportunity for our residents? And that's how I found these gentlemen. When, when I said they don't have advertising, I meant they have product placement for sure. I don't quite think of that as much as advertising. I think of them as a trusted source. And that's why we were attracted to them. We were thinking, here's a trusted source, essentially expertise on demand that you can tap into from the global community and bring to bear with the expertise and craftsmanship of our local uh, builders and contractors. And we think we can work with our community in a cooperative way so that we have a win-win scenario. Everybody wins. The county wins, the cities mm -hmm. win, mm -hmm. and the contractors and, and uh, community. Mm -hmm. So is this your relationship uh, with Eco Homes? It, that's the standard relationship. I mean, that's the way you normally operate. If I went from state to state, I'd find people just like Gordon who are building homes and they, were, they are uh, availing themselves of your services and your information. The people this find is... us. Yeah, that's yeah. that's people find us like like Gordon, for example, and this is how we when we have oftentimes we'll work on people's design teams. Like the, the website is one thing, but on a step by step basis, I often will get on people's design teams and us, us as a company we have on any different level. But on a more on a grander scale of what Gordon's talking about, we started this with a concept house in uh, northern Quebec, uh, a climate that's a little bit cooler than yours. <laughs> and as an example of what is possible, is that this is this is a house in northern Quebec. It actually it won an award, um, a House of the Year award for resiliency, and was called the most resilient house in North America by the Resilient Design Institute. Mm -hmm. And the reason what I want to mention about that is that it's been built in a way to withstand climate change, to provide a healthy environment for the occupants, but to last. And so what I mean is when you mentioned like to survive storms is we don't know what's coming with climate change. So to just keep building the same houses the same way, that's, that's foolish. You don't know what's going to happen. You need to anticipate the worst. So I said in that one particular house, when you talk about the, the efficiency and how much it's going to cost, a lot of people around here in Canada are pumping 1,000, 2,000, 3 or more thousand a year into heating a house. And then they'll do the same thing in the summer sometimes to cool it. So if you take all that money up front and invest in a better building envelope, so for example, that one that we built in northern Quebec called the Kanagami House, at one point the owner had shut off the heating system. He wanted to know if it was going on in February. Um, and I don't know what your Fahrenheit temperatures are like, but it was down around minus 20 Celsius, oh, which geez. is where oh, Celsius. That's oh, really cold. <laughs> so they, you know, with the heat off, the house is so efficient, uh, it collects passive heat, is the house stayed warm he actually hit uh i think it was up into the 80s um fair fahrenheit um it, at the point where other people are looking to turn on their air conditioners and this is in northern quebec in the middle of february so if we can do that there why why are we heating like like in california for example i 
a house that uh, have been down there. It's like, okay, well, the heat comes on at night, and then the air conditioner will come on in the day. Like, how how is that happening? Why are you investing in heating and cooling it on a 12-hour cycle? Build a better house in the first place. So uh, and, you're, and you're looking at various climates. You cross climate belts, uh, and so you learn from one climate belt to another climate belt on how to be efficient. But I have one last question I want to pose to all of you, and that is this. And what I get is that you have systems, uh, materials, technologies. Um, expertise. Say? Expertise on demand. Expertise on demand. You have, you know, a lot of people participating in great expertise. Um, and, and so that's one thing. And then you want to save money for the homeowner so the house isn't so expensive. And then you want to make it mm -hmm. efficient to build and operate. I guess that's also saving money. Um, and then you want to, uh, you want to make, you want to design it right so that it's easy to live in, you know, and you have a, you know, a, 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 an appropriate house for an appropriate use. Um, and then you also want to uh, save energy. Um, and finally, uh, you want to, you know, contribute to dealing with climate change. Uh, there's an awful lot of factors in there. And it strikes me that um, that's pretty ambitious <laughs> in the sense that some of those factors work against other factors. And sometimes you have to make a kind of Sophie's choice about which factor you're gonna, you're gonna, you know, I mean, what is the most important factor? Is it climate change, Gordon? Is that what we're talking about here? I think it's materials. And that's one of the unique opportunities here in Hawaii is to try to identify local resources, local construction approaches, how to make homes passive here so that we're not running a big air conditioner. As we all know, all of the energy here comes from oil tankers or solar power, which we have plenty of. But solar is only as good as when the sun's shining, unless, of course, we invest heavily in energy storage. So at the end of the day, it's always a balance of energy versus materials versus cost. And that's the equation that we intend to, uh, to focus on, is how we can use local materials, local talents, local craftsmanship, local sunshine, and, uh, and the environment to make our housing better more sustainable, more durable, uh, a better complement to our Hawaiian lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Bob and Mike, what would you add to that? What, what, what message would you leave with our viewers? I'll go first there, Bob. So just simply to add to your, your point, what you're saying is like, where, how, you know, how do you make those choices? Do I save the planet or save myself? And it's not always that conundrum you think. Often it comes together as a package. So for example, if I build a house that's more efficient, I might invest more upfront, I will save money. But if it's more efficient and if it's more comfortable, I'll be happier in it. So I've got quality of life. If I design it properly so it lasts, I won't have to rebuild it in 50 years. And it's going to hopefully weather through storms that we just don't know the severity of yet. And one of the most important things for me that I find, though, is resiliency because we don't know what we're getting, especially in Hawaii. You, you'll need to build in anticipation of weather events. So if, if I can build a house that is going to survive in a power outage to stay warm on its own, well, I might not have to go live in a gymnasium in the middle of a, a power outage like many other people. I can stay in my house. These are the ideas. It's making a house, it's, it's your own personal fortress, and yes, it will save, it helps uh, prevent climate change in the process. It's, it's absolutely necessary. Bob, what is, uh, what is your thought on that? I, I absolutely agree with all points made, and all I would add is that um, it's to, to, to embrace the solution where it's not necessarily about adding things. Um, you know, you don't buy your way out of, uh, you don't buy your way out of the issue of climate change and, and add uh, substantial extra uh, complications, et cetera, et cetera. It's about good design, and it's about um, efficient building structures. And it's perfectly possible to build efficient building structures. It's, it's about getting the information out there so people know how. Pe people don't know how to do it. People don't know where to put, as I say, the vapor barrier. Putting the vapor barrier in the right place in a home, especially an air-conditioned home, is essential. Um, and unfortunately, building code when it was uh, first designed, did not anticipate that everybody was going to have an air conditioning unit. So the fact that you keep getting the uh, the building structure 
and the uh, the drywall starts to deteriorate and get mold, causes health issues. You have to rip it out. You have to start again. That, that's down to bad design and bad technique. So we can change that. Well, thank you, Bob. Uh, Bob Pearson, uh, Mike Reynolds, ecohome.net. And Gordon, you, you have such good intentions and such good ideas and such good friends. Thank you so much for setting this up. Aloha, and thank you all so much. And we look forward to building better for everyone. Yep. Mm -hmm. Smart being the operative Smart. word. <laughs> thank you, gentlemen. As thank we you. say, thank as you. we say in Cincinnati, aloha. <laughs> <laughs>